Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is location number eight for the 15 photos, one location series. And today I'm focusing on two types of photography, one being long exposure shots and the other being minimal type of photos. And I'll get onto why I'm focusing on those two types of photography when I get down there in a little bit. And hopefully it'll help you guys out if you're feeling a little bit like I am at the moment. Okay, so my first shot of the day, I think right here, of course on my short walk from the intro of this footage down to this bit of the beach or coast, uh, it's gone gray and moody and it's a little bit rainy. So rains every time I come here. So down here, we've got this leading line, sort of breaking the rock there that's taken us up the frame. So if I stand behind the camera here to make it a bit more obvious, you've got the line there coming up lines up with that back rock there and then obviously the distance the waves and all that goodness okay just playing around with exposure times and in terms of the ocean rather than the foreground i actually prefer an exposure time of a couple of seconds just to get a lot more movement a lot more drama rather than that glassy look i'm never too fond of the glassy look anyway but i tend to start with that shot because obviously it's the longer exposure so i get them out, get them out of the way <clears throat> losing my voice get them out of the way and then go ahead and get some faster shots. And then I'm gonna come over here, get right on the edge and see if we can get more of this sweeping angle of the rocks. So two seconds for the exposure and let's see how this one comes out. I've already got my foreground shot, so that's okay when I'm bracketing in post. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I'm gonna move around, see what we can do. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna grab a quick landscape orientation shot here where we can see this rock edge sweeping around a bit more. It probably doesn't look like it in the video camera, but there's yellow speckles all along these rocks that I think will look quite nice when I bring the yellows up in post. And looking down this gap here, we've got a lot of water motion coming into that gap. So if a big enough wave comes, I think this shot's gonna be really nice. Sky is cracking for long exposures now. And then again, I think for this one, I am gonna bracket for the foreground rocks just to make sure they're properly exposed. I don't want them to come up sort of too dark or noisy in the final shot, even though these days with the data in cameras, you don't have to worry too much, but just in case, it's better to be safe than sorry. Okay, there's actually a really nice big wave coming now, so I'm gonna prepare, pre-focus, wait for that water to roll in. So I'm gonna be real, for the last maybe month or so, I've been in a bit of a photography rut. And not a rut in the sense of I'm not wanting to go out and use my camera or not eager to take photographs, because I absolutely am, but more so I'm, I'm really eager to shoot something new and unique. And I'm kind of bored of the, the same settings. I mean, if you stuck me in an Italian town right now or like New York City or something, I'd probably have an inspiration overdrive and be shooting from sunrise to sunset. I'm lucky enough to live on the border of the Northumberland National Park. So the coast, countryside, rolling hills and charming little villages are in abundance. So I'm definitely not in a shortage of places to go and visit and photograph. And I'm really appreciative of that. And don't worry, this video is in no way a wind or a moan or a boo-hoo. I've got nowhere to photograph because I do. And I'm really lucky and I know that, but there comes a time when all photographers crave something new and unique when it comes to the theme of the photographs they're taking. I've lived up here for six years now and I try and film a YouTube video every single week. I've pretty much done that, I think, for the last year or so. I'm also immersed in the area, just living life and dog walking and socializing and going out and grabbing coffee and the locations I go to all the time. Um, not really sure why I like this gate, but I do. So I'm gonna be taking a photo of it. What do we like? But then again, I don't know if I'm gonna get 15 out of 15 anyway. So might as, well have to, might as well take a photo of a gate, haven't you? When you've got the opportunity. Right, let's move.
approach that I take when I get in these little stages, these little ruts, if you will, that can allow you to keep practicing, keep going to your local spots and continue improving until you do have that next photography trip come up or maybe save enough money to go on a photography trip or even just take a train journey down to another city or something like that. Pick one of those local spots that you love that you photograph many times and is close by to you and then think about what you normally go there to take photos of, what style of photographs you take at that location. And then pick a completely different style and go there and take that style of photographs there. For example, today, Normally when I come to this spot, there's a nice huge house up there on the cliff edge. I would normally walk straight there, take photos of it, walk up and down the, uh, the cliffs and get shots of distant figures on the beach, people on the beach, which is my style of photography. I love that, but I've come here and I've done that so many times. Instead today, I've chosen long exposures and minimalism, two things I do love, but I don't do very often. And I've come here and I've told myself, I'm gonna do those two types of photographs in this place and ignore everything I would normally come for. I haven't even gone anywhere near the beach house that's over there. It's very common for us as photographers to go to somewhere we love taking photos and subconsciously kind of navigate towards those photos that we've took in the past or definitely the areas where we've yielded good results in the past. I did it last weekend. I went into the city, Newcastle to be precise, and I told myself, right, I'm gonna do, do some street photography, focus on some light and shadow and stuff like that. And I just went on autopilot and found myself walking straight to the hotspots that I've took photos at, that I've got great photos at in the past. And it clicked, I was like, I'm just kind of going through the same motions because my mind knows that I've got good results there before. So I can probably get good results there again, but is it gonna be particularly new or inspiring? Probably not, no, it's probably gonna be a slight improvement or maybe even a slight disimprovement. Is that even a word? <laughs> a slight disimprovement on photos I've took there in the past. Autopiloting towards compositions and vantage points and spots that you've yielded good photos from before and just repeating that over and over again, I think is, a faster way to get more frustrated and more uninspired. I think there's potential to do something with these three rocks at the front here, but the problem is the tide isn't coming in quite how I'd like it to sort of wrap around those rocks. But I'm gonna wait here for a moment or so and see if we can get one. So I'm liking that. We've got about four seconds, F11. And let's just hang on and wait and see if something happens with these three rocks. Oh, some big waves now. As I'm sure you're aware, other popular photography advice for people that might be feeling a bit like this is obviously to take a short break from photography, recharge your batteries, focus on a few other bits and bobs, maybe edit old photos that are still sitting in your Lightroom and just take a step back for a while. And that's great, that advice can work wonders, but the problem with that advice, I, I think it's more tailored for people that are really not feeling taking photos. They, they can't be bothered to go out with a camera. It's putting them in a bad mood and they're just not sure if they even want to do it, that's probably when you need to take a break from doing photography. Whereas this approach, I think, when you are still super hyped up to get out and use your camera and take photos and you badly want to get more shots each week, this approach is really, really good for those of us that can't jet off or 
train off or drive off anywhere we want because of commitments, because of money and all those kinds of life factors that play a role in our general ability to explore wide and far. Right, that's gonna be it from me in this one. Definitely give this approach a go if you're feeling like this right now or you do end up feeling like this in the future. I mean, I can almost guarantee that you will because that's how photography is. But as always, I'll link the 15 photos, one location playlist right here and you can check those out if you've got time. But if not, as always, I'll see you in the next one.